Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is E.R. Anderson. I'm the executive director of Keras Circle. Keras Circle is a nonprofit programming arm of Keras Books, and Keras Books is the South's oldest independent feminist bookstore. We are delighted to be with all of you tonight for this very special event celebrating Gossipin, a porch sit with Ra Malika Imhotep, Doris Davenport, and Arielle Marie. Uh, we are delighted to be the launch for this book. It is always an honor to help birth a book into the world. So congratulations to you, Ramalika. We're so happy. Um, this is always really and truly a very special day for us. Um, so I will introduce all of our conversation partners and then get out of the way so that this party can truly begin. Uh, so Ramalika Imhotep is a Black feminist writer and performance artist from Atlanta, Georgia, currently pursuing a PhD in African Diaspora Studies and New Media Studies from the University of California. As a scholar and cultural worker, Ra is invested in exploring relationships between queer Black femininities, Black vernacular cultures, and the performance of labor. As a steward of Black studies and Black feminist thought, Ra dreams, organizes, and facilitates spaces of critical reflection and embodied spiritual political education. Ra is co-author of the Black Feminist Study Theory Atlas and author of the book we are celebrating tonight, Gossipin. Doris Davenport is a 73-year-old lesbian feminist visionary, educator, and literary and performance poet born and raised in Cherokee homelands colonized by Europeans as Northeast Georgia. This place gives her faith in magical possibilities and solutions for all forms of oppression. Her education was at Payne College, BA in English, and at the University of Southern California, a PhD in African American literature. She has published 12 books of poetry, most recently Dancing in Time, Poetry, Monologue, Stories, and Lies, which is available from Karis tonight. We'll be dropping that in the chat. Additionally, Doris is working on a new book, possible title, Do I Remind You of Someone, to be published in mid-2022. Most recent project, 926-2021, was that she hosted a Zoom event with the generous help of Roots members, Natalie Falk and Indy, for the 11th Annual International Phenomenon, 100,000 Poets and Other Artists for Change. We're joined as well by Arielle Marie, who was a black and queer essayist, poet, and cultural strategist hailing from the deep South. The 2019 Plowshares Plow Emerging Writer Award recipient. She's received invitations to fellowships from many institutions, including Lambda Literary, Vota Voices, and Ten House. Her work is featured in Tri-Quarterly, Southeast Review, Black Warrior, and other journals. Arielle Marie writes and speaks about blackness, bodies, sex, pop culture, all from a black feminist lens. Arielle is the author of Gumbo Yaya poems, which we recently got to celebrate. And uh, so it's a real homecoming to be with all three of you. And again, a true honor. So D'Artrice um, had a little tech issue. She wanted to be the one to um, get to do this intro, but she's going to be with us in the chat tonight. And I'll be um, on the back end doing tech support. So welcome to you all. Thank you so much for being with us. And congratulations, Ramaleka. It's a huge deal to birth your baby book into the world. <laughs> wow. I'm like two seconds in and already. <laughs> So um, before we begin, as we enter this space, I, I want to invite my my collaborators and our witnesses to just join me in like three breaths, you know, okay. just collective breathing. I got my little altar bell. Okay. And if you'll just take a moment and if you feel comfortable, close your eyes, take a moment to feel into your seat or your feet, whatever you can feel your weight up against. And just take three deep breaths on your own time. And we back. Um, I wanted to begin when I was dreaming up this 
moment, this activation, this offering, um, the first person who came to mind was Doris Diosa Davenport, Dr. Doris Diosa Davenport. Um, and I would love if my elder, my mama D, um, could bring us in with a poem. Thank you, Ra. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I want to welcome everybody again into the celebration space. I apologize. I'm a little breathless. I'm very happy for Ra and Ariel, but also Pollen is trying to choke me. So forgive me if I keep drinking water. <laughs> you all into the celebration space, especially my invitees, especially my bio family. Y'all showing up in the chat. I'm loving you so much. And my friend Sherry from California, loving y'all. Thank you for being here. So we're celebrating Ra's gossiping and Ariel's book, Gumbo Yaya, is also her first book. I'm so proud of them. I'm so honored to be here. So in honor of that, I am going to read one poem from my first book, which was called It's Like This, published in 1980, when I think I was 30 or 31. Tonight, I'm 73, just to give you a reference. <sighs> Reading Gossip Pen, I was most struck by the way Ra conjures in the energies of her and sisters or ancestresses or grannies and her aunties. And those energies permeated my house and my being and my brain. And mm -hmm. so I'm honoring all of them and our transcestors and our LGBTQ for people. And also the one that I really am honoring right now, the one that I'm really feeling is Mamselle Marie Laveau. Vision one, Genesis for women of color. One, a white boys think they run America. They ruin America. White boys run America. A black boys, they just run, period. A white girls run the women's movement or ruin it too. And everybody runs or tries to run over and from black women. Listen, they said your place is not here. They said you have no place. They are, they're wrong. Listen to, in the beginning was the goddess. Goddess, say it with me, y'all. Goddess. Who, goddess. Thank you, thank you. Chose not to speak <laughs> at that time, knowing her words would be plagiarized, resented, misrepresented, denied. In the beginning was the goddess, and she chose not to speak, but to do. Hmm. Practicing and drinking ripple, probably, or some other wine, she made men. Along to women, she gave the powers, two heads. To us, she gave the sign, the moon. Along to us, her divine power, life. For us, she created the earth and all upon it. And then she sat down and waited for us to make it good, but we blew it. Words were invented and abused, but then women started to speak. The goddess stood up excited. We spoke too slow. She shook her head. She waits, the goddess waits, omnipotent, but wordless. She waited, knowing we are the word. She waits. Listen to Ra. I'm like, wow, I'm really just yes. Yes. on the verge of tears this whole time. <laughs> it's not waiting good. for you. Do you all hear me? These young people, two or three generations from me. I wrote this for them yeah. in 1981. I just got to tell you, okay, I'm going to shut up now. You can mute me anytime, ER, okay. And I must say that when I found that poem, I guess I got to tell the story now. Once upon a time, my daddy was like, I got this, this colleague, well, well, she's a, a colleague, a peer of mine, but you're a contemporary. And I was like, what kind of riddle is this? Um, but she was like, you know, she she she's a black, you know, womanist, feminist, queer. I don't think he said that word, but he said some word. <laughs> that wasn't disrespectful. That was, that was leading. Um, and I was like, who are you talking about? Doris Davenport. And I got to Googling and I found it's like this. 
And not only did Mama D allow the folks in Sinister Wisdom or grant them permission to digitally publish it like this, she she sent it with an introductory essay that breaks it all down. And I mm -hmm. had never felt so seen and anticipated mm -hmm. in that poem, in those words, in your walk as you know, black feminist, radical, poet, warrior from Georgia? Like really? In my own yard? I just, I couldn't get over it. And I'm so grateful that we've been able to build a relationship since that moment, since those beginnings. Thank you for singing us in. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what this porch sit idea means to me. Um, and it's also leading me to a question. So before I read my poems, I'm actually going to invite some some dialogue. Uh, but in the in the book, gossiping this this thing right here, um, the idea or the play between gossip as that thing, that conversational pattern, that good or bad habit, um, that practice of feminine dialogue or feminized dialogue rather. Um, there's something about the space of the porch. Um, and it came to me most clearly through the work of Zora Neale Hurston and thinking about how the space of the porch, the storefront are these social centers, these centers of information sharing. And further, like to be specific, the scene in their eyes are watching God that opens, like that whole book yeah. is a porch sit, it is. right? That whole book is the story as Janie is telling to Phoebe. Yeah. And I guess I want to start by inviting um, us all or y'all both to join me and just reflecting on Zora Neale Hurston and like what that name means um, to your work as a Black writer from the South. Um, yeah. Yes, I love how you jingled them books just then. I don't understand how it did not fall. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh, come through, Ariel. Come on, let's see. There's an optical illusion. There's a um. Let me let me show you. There's oh, a little shell. Um, oh, shell. Okay. Okay. From the front, you can't see. I stole them from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, but I wanted to just bring bring Mama in. Yes, Lord. Bring okay. Mama in and um. Barracuda is around here somewhere, but I Barracuda. I don't know why I said Barracuda. Mm -hmm. Barracuda is around here somewhere, but um, mm -hmm. I was just pulling from it earlier. But just wanted to bring the books in. I like to touch them. Yeah, yeah. So who? So who is Zora to you? I guess is my question. I'm waiting on you. Uh, Mama, do you want to go? No, I want you to go. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I um, you know, I feel. I feel like I had to extract Zora and meaning and make meaning of her outside of how, outside of our introduction. I think that our introduction was inside of, like in a school setting where uh, an English teacher just talked about her in this sort of like fantastical way. Like she had just done this like magical thing you know, sort of like hyper real feat of translating the black syntax, the black vernacular to the mainstream audience. And my, that introduction made me honestly not really have much interest in Zora and her legacy. Cause I was like, oh, one of my school teachers is telling me about this woman who was a journalist. And then you, co you come to, you know, at, later I, you come to understand that there's the sort of like K through 12 perception, like sanitized version of her legacy. And then it's the work that she act, that there's the work that she actually did, which was to almost out like to be someone in, in deep and a deep practice of intimacy with black people and our stories and our tongues and to be doing real work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to be someone kind of like, just south of conjuring and and how she was archiving our work and i and i just feel so my genre my home genre is poetry and i think you know there are there are poet griots who do wisdom keeping and storytelling through poetry and there's and and there's a way to kind of 
reach our people and and by reach our people i mean reach our stories and, and hold on to our stories that she does that i that just i mean it changes lives it it it, it builds worlds um and so i feel like specifically for me the what my touch point with with zora Neale hurston like the, the the deepest place that i feel connected to her is the way that she writes how we sound you know, honestly, like the, the the vernacular and the tongues, like there is no sanitization of the way that we speak. And I tried, to, I think that has inspired me to write how we talk. I mean, even now I'm kind of dressing up how we talk, you know, how I talk mm -hmm. and, and and instead write poems and, and write um, rigorous work that is, that sounds like how our, how folks speak, how we talk. Um, and I think that there's there's magic in that and world building in that. And I'll shut myself up now. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to make this really quick. Zora Neale Hurston is simply essential to my life. I mean, yeah. I read her, I think it was in 1973. And because I am close enough in time and I have this tiny little book, I'm, I'm gonna get up and find it, but I didn't want people to think I was walking out on my Ariel's talking because I wasn't going to do that. But I want to show you this perfect little book. It's 75 cents or something. Their Eyes of Watching God was like reading my hometown. It was, mm -hmm. it didn't have an introduction. The book is so old, it was in an edition, and that was when the book was out of print. So my mm -hmm. first readers from Payne College in the house. Um, Erskine isn't, but pain is always, you know, present, that purple and white. Anyway, he sent that book to me. He said, Davin, you have got to read this. I read it, and like Shirley Ann Williams said, I became Zora Neale Hurston for life. Since then, I have reread everything she's written two or three times. I can go off into Prince's and start reciting sections of my heart. I observe her birthday every day. My car's name is Zora Neale. My computer's name is Zora. I'll Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'll just say quickly, I, this morning I was just looking at, um, or I've been uh, sitting with Alice Walker's um, journals. I've been sitting with, uh, like, I love myself when I am laughing. And then again, when I'm looking mean and impressive. And I just, a genius of the South. And I think I see that, like strings of that genius in all of us. Um, and I think that there's a way that Zora has continually, like since I was a child being introduced or a younger person being introduced to their eyes are watching God, just claimed me. Even when I thought I was all fancy off at Berkeley writing my dissertation, I was like, yeah, da, 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 vernacular aesthetics, blah, 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 and hadn't sat with Zora. And I got to New Orleans and she said, what do you think you're doing? You know, just kind of like mandated, I think, again, about how I even could endeavor to define anything Black and Southern and vernacular and not call her name. Because um, it is rigorous. It is, it is a, it is a discipline. It is a discipline. It is a discipline. In a way that, like, I think, can you that's that, you know, inspired, that Zora maybe inspired the language of in your book, your new book? That well, I was, I was just about to, so I was, you know, we, we making our journey, we making our journey. <laughs> Again, I told you she made me call her name and she did it just now too. Come on. Um, so to start, I don't even think most people count this as a poem, but one of the last hmm. things in the content section of the book is a, I, I would call it a found poem, this like play of annotation and redaction of a Zora Neale Hurston quote. Oh. And it says, the negress offers a feather bed resistance. That is, we let the probe enter, but it never comes out. It gets smothered. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'll just read, oh my God. Well, wow, see, this book tells me what to do, you know, um, because I was really, I had marked like open, closed, da 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 da. No. Um, since, we're, since we're in the key of Zora um, and in the key of my ancestors, as this whole volume is, as um, Mama D, you pointed out, I want to read a poem titled Miss Graham Tells My Younger Self a Blue Joke or A Praise Song for Janie's Pear Tree. Mm. 
One day, the children asked, why grandma always sitting on the porch with her legs wide open? And the grown folks answered, she keeping the flies off her watermelon. <laughs> and I can see her clutching her knees in a fit of laughter, her lips curled to smile, her eyes coy in their gentle humor. I laugh before understanding the joke, this funk, the open leg bait, Grandma's body, a living thing, its organisms courting other bodies, a sweet lore protecting her fruit. Mm. I sit between open legs, other fingers greasing my parts. I inhale deep and don't say nothing. Whole black seeds slip out the side of my mouth, new laughter buzzing about my knees. To memory, I pray a poem to meet my baby cousins and them before the shame, before the too harsh scrubbing and blistered skin, before callous and the simple invasion of disgust, before the snickers and sidelong glances, before she learns herself the disquieting odor of a Bradford pear tree. Let there be the panting breath of the breeze, the dust bearing bees sunk into the sanctum of a bloom, Mm -hmm. The ecstatic shiver from root to branch. Mm -hmm. Let there be truth, yeah. funky like how we grow to like it. Mm -hmm. Let there be a mama who ain't afraid to tell it. Woo. Let me just go ahead and highlight. That. <laughs> that's so that's yeah. a praise song for Janie's pear tree. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, are there any questions bubbling up in any one of you? Any places y'all want to go here on this porch? And you know, word to making plans, but then moving in the spirit of the now. I really I was I had I came with questions. I came with questions about the sort of the 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 what what called to me when I first have been moving through the book, which was just like the the presence of the maternal and mm -hmm. what the usefulness is of that, or what the like how the maternal and maternal choreography kind of stirs, like what does it bring up in us as writers, whether it's you know mamas, whether it's old old mothers, whether it's you know grandmothers on porches with their legs open, like but and maybe we can return to that question, but I think right now. Um, I, you were talking earlier, and maybe this is a selfish question, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> I feel, I feel like I thought, I feel like I thought I knew, um, what I wrote. I thought I was aware enough of what I wrote, um, before the book dropped. And then the, the last several months have been, a daily practice of submitting to the intelligence of this thing that knows itself and me better than I know it. And so I wonder if, because I think I heard you say the book is teaching you, you know, day one, just got here, right, right, just got out into the world and, and it's teaching you already. And um, Mama D nodded and then I even saw people in, in the um, chat talking about, uh, you know, just the oracle nature of it and i'm wondering what is your relationship over over the path over the writing process mm -hmm. um oh, in the in the short window of post publication that you've had the 12 hours <laughs> right um what is your relationship to the text as it becomes um self-knowing does do you think your the text has become self-knowing do you how does it oh, you yeah. know Ooh. What's what's happening now that the book is itself and not a thing in your mind? I mean, I mean, you too, Mama D, because I want to know if you've had that experience. We're all twelve. We're all thirty-two of these books you wrote. <laughs> no, I mean, I definitely recall. Like, I I was with this manuscript for a long time. Yeah, like I kind of called it from 
my my insides and my interwebs and my hard drive and then i thought with it and then i submitted it somewhere and then it got back to me then they were like and sit with it some more so i've i've like been with it for some time and it wasn't until it was final copy that i i stopped looking at it <laughs> and then when i when it came back at me i was like oh like that's doing something that's saying something that's singing something mm. there's like a way that even after like when i got the galleys and i was working with my dear friend and black feminist pr magician alia neely and she would like text me like oh my god i love how this thing is happening with the voice and i'd be like would you look at that yes that is happening and i did do that you know i did do that even before i could give that action its proper name you know mm -hmm. um and i think there's a way that i'm excited like today i finally got that this is look this is outside of me like this mm -hmm. thing is officially outside of me it moves and travels um it moves and travels without my need like i'm not the gatekeeper of whatever the story is that's in this book um and the the story that i'm telling um or the story that's being told isn't mine and it actually never was or it was in part but i, I think i'm like again it's been 12 hours i'm still learning and in the kind of Un, un, unraveling of it but I'm really excited because I think I was scared for a long time mm. about what it would feel like to have mm. this set of questions wanderings and stories out in the world like I mm. knew I was writing from a necessary place um, from a place that was very concerned about what it meant to claim like survivorship for myself and my ancestors yeah. Um, and I was, I think I was maybe even like overburdened by like the weight of what that could mean. Um, and I think today I've just felt this sense of like ease and like a softening in my shoulders around like whatever this story is, it's going to do its work and it's going to mean a lot to different people. It's going to mean different things to me. And I'm really genuinely excited by it and excited that I took care of myself enough yes to available to it yes um to like let the story come through and i'm i'm like actively trying to own that that the act of like preparing uh, as gabrielle seville would say like preparing for ritual is ritual like i really had to take care of myself to give myself the space to be available to these stories and then in that i'm hearing lucille clifton because i think she has a quote that's like these are some poems that wanted to write themselves and i was available or uh, something like that. So yeah. I'm just really in awe of the whole process of, of poetry, honestly, and just what it means to to create, um, to spill. Yeah. I say to spill. Mama D, do you did you feel like your relationship to the text that you wrote um throughout your career have been like is there a moment where you kind of like the 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 work itself calls you to reorient to it, even after it's like out there in the world? Mm, I think my poems talk back and forth to each other through me. And so since Ross said I could, I'm gonna read this real short one for my book, Dancing in Time, okay? This real yes. short one. Uh, I just noticed, you know, you know, Zami is one of our sponsors and Marianne Adams just showed up in the chat. You know, she's found the Zami. So I, I have a poem for, for uh, Mary Ann and him, and I can't find it that quick, but I'm just share this first one. The poems talk to each other, and I do what the poems tell me to do. This is from 2019, my book, Dancing in Time, 25 years oldie, 25 years old redundancy, evicted, must move again. How is this different? Demon howl demands, descending circles, leaves fall, instructing humid, hurricane pushed air. Hey, there is a creative writing job at Spelman. I don't know, I don't think so. 25 years later, no home, no money, no idea, grumble, mumble. What, what here at the almost end of, wait, 
How is this different? Well, that one big dream done, remember, I got a little honey, a PYT say, just come to me. My soul, oh, the leaves up here on my mountains, my soul has been rectified. The mountains sustain me. My soul, at least, is rectified. And what about yours? Mm. 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 Yeah, that's one answer. The poems were in and out. And um, I have a lot of energies for our poor people, but I'm also looking forward to our generations coming. So at some point I want to read a poem which came out of a picture that an old friend of mine sent me from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She texted me, her name is Kelly Tiggs then, now it's Kelly Tiggs Jenkins. When I had, um, when I had those glorious long dreadlocks, Mm -hmm. They look so good because Kelly kept my hair looking good. All right. Hey, yes, Kelly. <laughs> and so Kelly sent me a, a picture of her baby. She's six, seven months old. And I, a poem started coming. That's what I mean by the poems worked me. And so it's mm. one I would like to share that poem. Uh, not right now, but that there is this organic, inorganic, I am a conduit for poems. Mm -hmm. I share. I share. L, is there any poem dumping out at you to share right now? Like, is there any talking poem or poem that's taught you anything in particular mm -hmm. in the past couple of months? Ariel. I got a list for Ariel. <laughs> my list. Come through. Let me see now. I want y'all to know, Mama D emailed me and said, this is the poem you can read. <laughs> I'll be looking, page one, and then, ooh, you got that thing going with black girls with the X in it. Black <laughs> girls, you got to do a little X in the, in the, in the, let them know something funky going on. Yeah, yeah but funky. <laughs> you tell me, Mama D, which one, which one am I reading? No, the first one, page one. Hit that, hit that beginning for me. Page one? Page one. What, what? Oh, I ain't done that one out loud. Okay, we doing that one out loud. No said acknowledgments. Well, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you. Say yes, ma'am. Well, this is. I hope we. I hope it. I hope it do what it's supposed to. Read the first five stanzas and do what you want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love choreography. Okay. Amen. 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 Facilitation. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. This is um. This is from Gumbo Yaya, and it's the. Uh, the first series and the first series of, I don't know what these little things are in the book, but first uh, talking series in the book. And it's called Notes and Acknowledgements. Well, first I wanna recognize the land we stand on is stolen. Let it be said here at least that all black lives matter that water is indeed life. And above all things, we the people is how any patriot begins his lie. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge the author tried to craft a project with siloed agendas, pursued poems as small acts of war or love letters for a father, daggers for the 45th president, but those invocations must wait. I write to you with a soft hand and gritted teeth. I acknowledge the rhetorical struggles, myth, and obligations. I acknowledge we are not allowed any singular monuments. Understand, reader, the world is seldom mine to build, but is indeed here ours. Mm -hmm. With olds and laments, ours and built by the blood of Ebonics, mm -hmm. atomized libraries, and anything coaxing our pleasures erect. Black girls, or as the evening news has named us, extremists our kindred in this anti-making, mm -hmm. already cooking feasts out the dry skin of nationalists, mm -hmm. feasts with our jewels and old mothers, mm -hmm. feasts, sankofa and broth. Mm -hmm. We rid this world of all its guns and elbows, its gum and marrow. 
I slurry out a poem from the new world, stir it into a meal, and its name is Yaya, wild, welcome. This new world hollowed by swarms of bees and languages chewed out of jazz. Mm -hmm. Ours, this world, enraged by even a splinter, interrupting mm -hmm. the palm of our wildest girls. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Even a splinter. Don't let it be a splinter. Wow. Wow. Get it crazy. I told you she was hot. I told you. <laughs> Thank I you, love thanks. the rock, my God. Mama, hey. do you have any question on your heart? Or I think there's some questions that popped up. But before we go there, do you have any question for us? Yes. Can you read page uh, 100? Was it was that you or, or one of y'all? <laughs> Might be both. Let me see. I think that's you. Ah, Georgia me, that's you, 77, Ariel. And I guess 100 must be you. Yeah. Go ahead, take it away. Are you reckon your parents here? Because I sure do want to thank them. <laughs> Ra, go ahead. Page 100. Go ahead, Ra. Page oh, 100. Oh, oh, oh. Mama D said, my question is about, is about y'all reading these poems. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't mad at it. You know, I really hey, Y'all got a question. Read this poem. Okay. Mm -hmm. This poem is called <clears throat> Let me drink some water. Here we go, Dr. Risha. Thank you. All the black things cry sometimes. Mm. Mm. See, I ain't never really wanted to die. Mm. Just disappear for mm. a little while. Be without body, without mm. weight, without consequence. Wonder. Mm. What more there is to specter than scapegoat? What might I feel at free? Is feeling still a black thing? Am I ever less than the nothing I've been handed? How might I break open the morning in my chest, throw the towel in, give up, resign to the feeling of air against open palm? An imagined caress, lightly kissed, open. That's how I want to touch you, right in the place you conjure me. Let's mm. swear solemnly to be up in a no good approximation of my worth. No more bids and visibility. Don't see me, I beg. Let me rest in peace, be still. Be silent, be tears muffled in asphalt, be the ground, be beneath you, walk on over, spit a crude blessing, pour some of yourself out for a dead hoe that looks a little bit like me, but goes by another name, me mm. dying, me needing to get out this body, ain't even gotta stop breathing, y'all, listen. Just let this body be apart from me. Something different, maybe. My own thing. Do my own thing. Let me feel for once free. Will you miss me? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Mm, mm. Yeah. Mm. I, I hadn't intended to read that one out loud, y'all. <laughs> That's a full poem. poem. <clears throat> My next question is page 77. Are you? I don't know a lot about questions. Um <laughs> Woo. Okay. If you want to. So. 
Um, this poem is called Georgia Me. And I'm still caught up in the holy of what Rod just read. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use this as a moment to just get ourselves together. Mm -hmm. so Y'all even got to listen to this one. <laughs> Y'all can take care of yourselves and drink some water. <laughs> well, please drink some water. <laughs> Ooh, we can take a breath to breathe, can't we? If you need to, Aria. Oh, sure. I mean, you okay absolutely. to breathe? I'm always, always here for breath, but I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm just grateful, just grateful. Um, mm. Oh, word. Folks are asking for breath. So let, why don't we do that? Breath. Yeah. Yeah. Roger, do you want to leave? No, we could just take a moment. Like as um, a friend once said to me, like, I know y'all know how to breathe. That's the one thing I know y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm in a workshop on breathing. So we'll just invite a pause and then Ariel, you can you can read after. Breathe. Yeah. I can see you are breathing. That was a good one, Ra. That one got it. I'm gonna be sitting with that. Amen. Amen. I share. Somebody said read it again. No. Child, I, I I will call you Kessie and I will read. Oh, that's Kessie. Hey, Kessie. Those <laughs> been years. Child, it's been years. And I guess I can say before we move on, just to speak yes. and hold the tenderness of it, that mm -hmm. I think another another facet of this of this book is um well. <laughs> Disability, disability. Why wow, I can't even say it. But, um, but yeah, mental, mental health, mental illness. Um, but particularly, I think taking the time to. I like it's. I think it's like the language is in the poem, so it's hard to find more. But there's something that I've been thinking about for the past couple of days about how you know our like black feminist canon or tradition um has like places it don't like to shine light on or places it yeah. don't like to touch yeah and i think something i'm learning about this work is that there is like this like necessity i feel in offering to this moment this moment of like critical discourse and like the continued you know mattering of black lives and the continue the long fight for black liberation all these things but but i remember finding myself in 2020 when everything was on fire and i couldn't leave my bed really contemplating vulnerability and i think that since then i've had this reckoning with disability with madness with sickness and I think there's a way that, um, while that's not all that that poem is, I think it does give voice to a resonant feeling um, of our resonant desire um, to not be. And I think that that's a conversation that I don't even know how to have, but I think the language of the poem or the story that presented itself through the poem wants to wants us to think about it and wants us to feel it um so mm. thank y'all for for listening and witnessing and feeling and that's something i think you i think we've known each other for a long time for i i, and I think it, i always i i'm so surprised always to be like damn <laughs> <laughs> we have known each other for a long time um and I think that what has been true for a good number of years is that you have been someone who navigates and moves through the Black feminist canon, but is undressed and ungathered <laughs> in a way that I think I wish um, all the folks who are kind of gathered up under that umbrella would allow themselves to ungather and be undressed and, and naked and the both and and I think um or the or the or the expanse of what it means to be the folks who survived 
what we were never meant to survive. Um, it Surviving when you're not supposed to is messy and ugly and choppy. And um, yeah, I think... I think you I think I've always looked to you as someone who is being you know naked in the expansiveness of what's what what what's alive when you black and and not a man and not straight <laughs> in the world. Um and my, and Mama D, I know that you asked me to read page 77, but I'm actually feeling called to this. There's actually this in in the in the spirit of that um, and in conversation with that poem that you just read, there's a, amen. There's actually a, <laughs> a poem that I don't even know how this got cut from the book. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I actually want to talk to them about putting it in the book in the, in the next time they they do a um, whatever you call it. Second printing. Yeah, another printing because I don't I don't even at, towards the end I just got scared for stuff to enter the world and I think this got shot because I was scared more than anything. Um, but it, but it's, it's about that. It's, 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 it's doing that. It's speaking to what's being called up. And, um, I want to do that. And then, um, yeah, we, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I know I'm scared. I'm just talking. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, but this poem is called the limit. Uh Oh, the limit. Um, the limit does not exist. Mm -hmm. Say I pull a young daydream from my breast and desire then a cylinder for my teeth to grind and it is noon and another of us has died and is gone and I'm tired, okay. say I'm tired. And it is Tuesday and the sun is a surly shape. The sky is doing its slow, weepy magic and there is no food in the icebox again. Today, there is Anita Baker playing or outcast and say, I get weary of holding the world up on my shoulders and calling it living. And I am only 14, but saw my father put his gun away once. He held it tenderly, so small, and yet so powerful, enough to make a man like my daddy hold his tongue, mind the shifting of his weight, and say, I don't want to die. I want to make a man cower without spilling myself into trillions. Or maybe I am less offended by the spill and more so mind the mess and say, I've eaten enough honey and wheat to pollinate a world. And there must be another word for tired. I've said it so much. There are grooves in my tongue and it stings when I bite. Say there I am willing for my lids to meet one another in the middle and rest. And yes, I'd sever my breath from this body if it finally meant sleep. Yes, tired. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I offer this body to the trill of a thousand mourners, to a holy sound, to the deep glory of a gathering, and say there are seven bullets in my father's cigar box, and I open to find the familiar bloom of wood and chewed tobacco. And I say to myself, do you really want to go? And no one answers. I pet the small back of the thing that makes my daddy quiet and prepare to find a new way to say my own name. I take two swigs of my father's crown royal so my mother could sleep if this was a drunken mistake and metaphor splinters my jaw and the day is holy and a toothy cannon. Mm -hmm. After a breath, I place the gun back into its womb and the shells I keep as a fuck you and I feel no particular way. I am still here. I laugh myself back into the body and say my father comes home late and asks the day, how was it? And I laugh, bright, I say, with mm. rain. Mm. Mm. Whew. Whew. 
Just breathe. Just breathe. I got some for you, Aria. Just breathe. This is for you, Aria. This is for everybody from my book. This is called Cheer for Me. Mm. This was written in 2019 in this book, but just recently on the news, a mother and her 11 year old daughter were viciously beaten by four to five males, I believe that was somewhere in India. They were beaten badly simply because they resisted being raped. I think they beat them up real bad and went on whatever they were doing. I don't know. This is also for those two women. But I was in the park one day and there was this little girl. Cheer for me, she said, a sparkly little five year old or four. Cheer for me. She shouted at the cigarette smoking smartphone texting man in the pavilion, oblivious to her antics. He was, which I swear included an imaginary friend that she held her hand out to as she skipped, jumped, ran around the playground alone, yet as if surrounded by a devoted crowd. I liked her. I liked mm -hmm. her. My inner child, mm -hmm. the little girl I never quite was, wanted to play. But you know, and I know I can't because arrested for a geriatric pedophile or worse and his black history mom too. So I enjoyed her joy distantly as I circled the track. I heard her order the second time, daddy, cheer for me. Yay, Layla, daddy sang out. And this is me cheering for her for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. This is for Layla and Ariel and Ra, and lively little girls all over the world. My great niece, Lisa Doris. This is for all the little girls that we old ladies, crones, women used to be, cheering for us all, cheering us on. Mm. I say, I say, I say, I say, oh, oh that cheer for me. Yes. Mm. Y'all, this is literally the dream, like right here, <laughs> this moment of like letting the poems speak, like we were talking a bit about how the poems speak to us, how the poems speak to each other, but to do that in good company feels mm. like such potent medicine and magic, and I'm so grateful to be in this exchange with y'all, my God, my God. There's a poem um, that I want to read that is new, so it's not in the book, but it's telling me to read it. So um, I'm going to pull it up, and then I'm going to let you hear it. And you have three questions. Ooh. Just so you know. OK, well, perhaps a question first. Oh, oh y'all voting on the questions. Where, where is the question? If you go to the bottom and it says, ask a question. Oh, ask a question. Okay. I can, I can read them to you, Raw. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Ooh, um, wow. Oh, who cool is here? Hey, Akua. Akua asks, is there a simple ritual you can offer us for approaching your work, Raw? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I think there's something about this work that calls for and necessitates water. And I think that that feels important. Akua, I'm thinking of your ritual magic of the the act of gathering with, with a bowl, like a clear bowl of water in a space to anchor you. But, but beyond that, like you could get there if that's like the level of ceremony that you at. But I think just the act of having water, having a cup of tea, um, engaging the work in a space where you're able to pour into yourself, um, even maybe to pour out in those moments where maybe something lands in a way where like it could be a tearful location, it could be a tight location, but maybe you pour water out um, onto the ground, into a glass, give a libation. Um, I've thought a lot and been having a lot of visions about dirt lately um and i think that this is not at all a prerequisite for engaging this book but i think if you could be 
like if if you want to touch dirt like i think maybe it's like definitely be drinking water because you should be drinking water well it's, where it's a sophia smart where it's sophia smart <laughs> <laughs> so but definitely have water by you as you as you read um and then also ground so if ground looks like just like feeling into your bottom if it looks like reading standing if it looks like your feet or hands in dirt sometimes i just put my hand in the plant next to me you know like all those things are welcome to mm. um, and i i don't want to make it seem like this book just like knock you upside your head and completely yeah. unmakes you and all that mm. stuff but i do want to like hold that it is yeah. like, that it's medicinal mm. um and that it is holding a bunch of stories about trauma survivorship survival um ghosts my dead folks um you know and i think that that requires um care and i i guess the the most simplest ritual is just to take care of yourself um and also take your time mm -hmm. thank you for that question I mm -hmm. and then um what is time how what is what is time who even cares? Uh, but Judd asked, what music inspires you the most? Can that, Can we let that be for all of us? What music inspires y'all the most? Well, it depends on what I'm, can you hear me? Am I, it depends on what I'm writing. I, I used to listen to music much more than I do now. Well, well I lived in a place where I could blast the music. And so, you know, war um, uh, used to get me going a lot, you know, and that was, Judson said he listened to John Coltrane. Well, then Judson, of course, and gave, that's my nephew, by the way. Um, that's my sister, Maggie's son. And anyway, um, yeah, Coltrane, but Jimi Hendrix, you know, if I really want to get somewhere, Jimi Hendrix, Nina Simone. Mm -hmm. and just, you know, falls in place after that. Thank you. Yeah, I um. I feel like the longer time goes on, the less I listen to current music. Yeah. I'm just like, I'll, I'll listen to it when I'm with my folk, with my, with my friends, or when I'm out, or when I'm ready to turn up. But I, I kind of get into a rut with, with not even in a, in a negative way. Just I get into like a place where I just want to hear the same, the same sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, what even are those? But I think for mm -hmm. me, uh oh, I was gone. I didn't even realize. Um, for me, I love Anita Baker. I love, um, mm. I love anything like soul. I've been on a real mm. like soul and like old R and B kick lately. Um, don't let the streets. I, I mean, I guess you can't tell the streets, but I really love Minnie Riperton. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I really love. Her. I'm obsessed yes. with her. I I play um. Yeah. Uh, Lay floors like 20 times in one day. And I be jamming. I be jamming. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I mean, I do love Beyonce. I, 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 I so, like, between that and, like, you throw some Neo Soul in there. And then, like, Mareba. Mareba is probably a newer artist who I'm obsessed yes, with. Yeah. Like, and, and I've been, I've been chilling on hip hop lately. I usually am, like, I got my, like, the, the hippity hops and the raps I'm all and I just really haven't been um listening as much lately I've been really hanging out with like soulful wailing music and mm -hmm. oh and, I, and, I, and I'm a, I'm a gospel baby I will blast absolutely I will blast what about uh, Mary Jackson, Jackson. Mm, yes I love Mahalia Jackson okay absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, y'all. Now I'm like, I do need to make a playlist because, yeah. Yeah, you do need to make a playlist for your book. You sure do. I know. Wow. It was on the list, y'all, but, you know, life is life. And when you oh, actually, need, when you actually the, sick and you trying to do all this stuff. Yeah. No, I did I did the playlist like a month afterward. I was like, oh, and, and Yanni's, Yanni's on the book, my book playlist. I saw Yanni here. There's a playlist in this book. There's a playlist in here. 
No, there's uh, one that accompanies it. No, have to get there's you one. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll email it to you. Oh, page. okay. I'm so, I didn't list. think I missed that. I'm like, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I'll share briefly. I think I'm also, like, I'm noticing that when I'm writing, trying to write, whether that's poetry or essays, dissertations, like, I actually can't have words or it has to be a very particular frequency yes. happening so i do be in my jazz bag i, I love me some alice coltrane um recently um esperanza spalding is just bringing the medicine intentionally um and that music has been anchoring me also i love me some folk music particularly of the black lesbian variety y'all know what i'm yes. talking about me and tracy chapman uh, uh, armor trading <laughs> uh joy a recent person i think is joy ola kun i might i i don't know if that's how you say that person's last name mm. um recently i saw uh toshi regan play with big lovely at um in in oakland and that gave me so much joy yeah. um Oh yeah, yeah. Now so I can learn about these new artists who sound like just my type. Yeah, I'm really like I and I even Bernice Johnson Regan sometimes. Like I, I feel like I'm in constantly different moods. And mm -hmm. let me not pretend like I am also from West Atlanta. So there is that is there. You know, there is some some trap every now and then that helps me get where I need to go. Sure. Um, but I think as far as like inspiring the work or expiring inspiring or allowing my brain just to move words and work language um it's often jazz i've been there's like a playlist i like this like um like just a bunch of tracks from like impulse records i guess which was like a um mm. like a, a more like experimental jazz label um so yeah it's it's all over the place but i'm excited to go about the work of making a playlist so stay tuned y'all um oh i was gonna say this there's this um this jazz shorty, Nubia Garcia. And I think she a queer. I think she's one of us. Uh, she's new, she's younger, but I be blasting her. I ain't never listened to a whole jazz album. I have my like, I have my hits off of different artists, you know, a little cut here, a little, little, little this, little that. I listen to her, her album start to finish and be jamming out. So. Okay. <laughs> oh my god i almost melanie charles is a new like jazz vocalist that i am obsessed with she has a tiny desk that is phenomenal like just like phenomenal um and there are so many more i do melanie charles is the name i just said and then i think N nubia garcia is the name that l had just said um, i'll put them up yeah. now i could say something mm -hmm. okay I just is not my place, but it is 841. And I thought we had an hour. So what's going on with that? Yeah, well, we just hit an hour because we started a few minutes late okay. um, because we were navigating tech difficulty. There's one more question. And then I was going to invite um, like Mama D to read a poem and then I'll read a poem. And then the good people can go home. Okay. Or stay for the encore. The encore. Dude. It's like when you <laughs> left a porch on time, you know it takes three rounds of goodbyes. Yeah. Um, you have to do that twice at least <laughs> when you actually leave. But um, mm -hmm. so this last question. Oh yeah, let me read it. I'm sorry. No worries. Um it's a two part. Um uh, part one is is from uh Saritha Williams. And Saritha asks, Can you imagine your book paired with other books? Uh what would that syllabus look like? Hmm. And then also, I well, I guess we just talked. We kind of answered part two. Do you have a music playlist you recommend to accompany your book? Okay. Playlist, is, playlist is on the way. But playlist part one on the way. The people <laughs> want it, and I will provide. Okay, I give the streets what they want. Um, now Trisha said we're gonna stay here all night. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Hey, cool. Yes, hey, cool. I'm with you. I thought it would be at least an hour and a half because I felt like we would just be getting started, especially if we're talking, right? 
So I'm no, going to say you you look you think it's seven o'clock, you look up, it's two in the morning, you're like, How did I get here? What happened? How did, how did I do that and woke back up? So and we have to we have to do a part two. We have to do a part two for gossip yes. and gumbo yah yah and well, IRL. do a part two seriously because we didn't even get anywhere with your two books. I need to hear more. We and we will and we okay. will. I'm okay. down for the part two, three, and five. All right, all right. Um, okay. I'll, I'm trying to think about. I actually because I am who I am. I have thought about this question about other books and syllabi and stuff. And, and I feel like I have two answers because okay. if I'm in my most esteemed, I do think that my book sits somewhere between what Gail Jones was doing in Corregidora and what Aquake Amezi was doing in Freshwater. Mm -hmm. But I would not recommend you read them all at the same time because that sounds intense. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but I do think there's like this, this, um, concept of fissure also a book i've been thinking about lately in that group is uh marcy blackman's poe man's child mm. um which is they're like these these tough books but but about like these fissures and trauma and time and ancestors and i think they all have different ends mm. um but there's like something there that i'm really curious about um i think also about um Wow, I lost my train of thought. I think you should read it with Gumbo Yaya, and I think you should read it with uh, both It's Like This and Voodoo Child, which are works by Doris Davenport. And I'm not just saying that. Like, I actually think that's true. If Because I'm really curious about what it might be to build, like, a Black, queer, feminist, poetics mm. course. Like, I, I don't know what that would look like. I never take it. I wish I did. But I would love that. And I know there are names that I didn't um, list just then. Um, but that's something that I'm really curious about, too. So, yeah. Uh, I got That just got me really energized to think about. Uh, so I'll keep thinking about that. And maybe a syllabus will come, come up. To on, that, on, oh, that I, on that level, though, I kept seeing both of you in the context, in the canon with Intozaki Shange. I oh, was, my God. I just I kept certain poems with both of you. I would hear her her rhythm. I would see yeah. the words on the page. Like maybe that's not maybe it's just a black girl thing, a black girl poetic thing. But oh, I, no, 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 no. You're I, right. I, you're right. I think thank you. No, for you're that absolutely right. I just it just pooped up, but I would not. No, I think it's just, it's such a given. It's such <laughs> not not a given. Like of course my wife is like her, is like her. But I think it's such a given that I that that she's at the center of my writing world that I didn't even think of to, to even, I just assumed, I was like, yeah, and this is- it's like, well, the, you know that. You know you're supposed <laughs> to read it next to Intozake, right? And not- The word is worth, Ra, Ra is the only, I be out here like, so nobody want to talk about Intozake Shanye? Nobody. Any time of day. Any, and I'm like, I know, Ra's going <laughs> to- me and you, you and me, both of us. Oh, together. but I, got, I have to share this with you both. I will send it to you, but- um, the Langston Hughes Review just published a, an Intozaki special, and I have an article in that, so I will send yes. you that. And it's a phenomenal mm -hmm. es article, essay, letter. The I ooh, Mama D, I ain't even got to tell you how I feel about it yet because I was in the prep for this. But okay. thank you. Ooh, it's so good. Oh, I need that. That and was it's, Intozaki flowing through me. My appreciation for Intozaki, so I can. If I am saying that I hear in your work, your words, some of Intozaki, I'm saying you are such a blessing to me, both of you. Mm. Really, really. I take her work seriously to the bone, mm. to the bone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Loving it. Yes. Thank you. That's the uh, right there. Wow. We just had an Intozaki moment. Wow. I know she was nearby. I'm like, I think I got it. And then there, there's a book right there, Nappy Edges. Yeah, no, I see it. It's right. It's staring at me. It's like, what you thought. Thank you, Mama D, for bringing yeah, that in. Thank you for bringing that in. I'll send that tonight. Now, what, what's next? What were you going to do? Oh, I also mm -hmm. wanted to say quickly another part of this that's super dreamy for me. Um, oh, come back, Elle. I'm um, here. Another part of this that's super dreamy for me is to be co-sponsored by Zami Nobla in the Auburn Avenue Research Library as a little like, you know, 
Atlanta child, Auburn Avenue, the Auburn Avenue Research Library, its old location and the new one have been cornerstones yeah. of my like life. Yeah. And so to be co-sponsored, to be on their radar as an author just feels like something I will be processing um, for a long time. Yeah. And I swear to say something because I was like, I got a little notification. I said, now wait a minute. Like, it's major. Uh, it's come major. On, you know I mean? Yeah. It's major. And I think I feel a particular it's major. It's major. I just feel grateful, y'all. I feel grateful that, like, to be here with y'all, to be in this space of conversation. I'm going to pause and Ariel, do you have thoughts about who Gumbo Yaya needs to be read with? Um, no, because this, like, this, no, this is um, this okay. is the launch party of. Okay, Gossip well, Panda. thank you for that correction. If you want to, if you want to read my book, you can read Gossiping, and then you can get around to Gumbo Yaya. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I my they, like, please, they like. I do think you're supposed to read them together, and then you know we know each other, so like you could. Listen, like, I now I will say since you since you asked since you just brought it up, I will say that I love reading. Like there are other there are poets who you can read their work and know who they're in conversation with. And we haven't even we've been so deep in our book processes that I don't think we did a lot of processing together, um, if any. But I opened the book and I was like, oh, yeah, that's fam. That's, there go my kindred. <laughs> yeah, it feels very it feels it feels very warm and familiar to me in a way that I think um, I think our books are our siblings. Um yeah. If I could be so presumptuous and forward, <laughs> absolutely. And it's, it's such a, it's a, it's a, that's such a, a, a kiln and a and a spark to know that our books are our our siblings, sister siblings. That's and cool. deeper than that, in the the there's a line in these here acknowledgments. I don't oh, I saw. I, but I um. I really owe a lot to the performance and I, ooh, you know, life is complicated and things change, but um, the performance <laughs> in 2017, Destiny Rivers, I saw. Queer Emerging Arts, the whole cohort listed, cause I really watching y'all with my dad and my brother at this queer ass poetic experience. In an old church. <laughs> in an old church, moving through rooms, sound, light, color, testimony refusals, uh, just many feelings. And I, and sitting there witnessing y'all, I was like, oh, like I can write into this. Like the place mm. that this is touching in me, mm. I can write from there, mm. you know? I can tell those stories. I can be with, I think as I describe it, like the black queerness of my body's survival, you know, I can yeah. be in that. And I can play with language. I've learned so much from you and Kiki Nicole, like just about, mm. honestly, about how to be about Ntozake's work, um, honestly. And so I'm just, I'm just grateful. And yeah, I could go on for days, but I do think that it feels right now to gesture towards closing this portal that we've opened. Um, if y'all was all here, I would be like, y'all come over to my house and then we just <laughs> open, up, open up some brown and keep talking. <laughs> yes. Also, shout out to Mo in the chat, Saltwater Sojourn, which is a collaboration oh, is with Kiki Nicole, with Destiny Hemphill, whose book Oracle I just got hip to and who like is also in the Kindred circle, but from a couple years ago. Um, yes. Ahe, and I hope I haven't missed anybody else's name, but that work is astounding that y'all do as Saltwater Sojourn, and I yes. feel so blessed to witness. Um, yeah, Mama D, you got a poem for the people? I actually have two, but I will read one, okay? I'm just going to read one because somebody else might have one. This one is new, and as I said, poems tell me what to do. This is the poem I mentioned for um, Kelly Tiggs Perkins. She sent me the picture of this baby and I wanted to share the screen and show you that picture, but I didn't get her permission first. So I can't, 
I don't want to put her baby up here, but if it's a seven-year-old baby, a little girl, got the brightest, prettiest eyes, right? Pretty little brown face. Now, Kelly is a hairdresser. She had the baby's head wrapped in a pretty little scarf. The baby's looking right at you like, what's up, right? I was like, oh, who is this child? That child is Zania Clarice Jenkins. Come on, Clarice. This piece is for Zania Clarice Jenkins and Supreme Court Justice Judge KJV. This is for the eight months old daughter of Kelly Tix Jenkins and her husband, Emmanuel Jenkins IV. And my almost three year old great niece, Lisa Brooke Narius Matos. Her nickname is Lisa Doris. This is the daughter of my nephew, Judson, who was here earlier, and Michelle Matos. Also for my great nieces, Layla. Her birthday was April 1st. She just turned 17. And Olivia, who will be 11, I think, in November. I got me a bunch of nieces. Look, look at Zania. Behold our next Supreme Court judge. Ascending to that post if she wants to. Confirmed with respect, admiration, gratitude, love. If she wants that job. That is only one offer among many when it's time. Look at Sania. Already she sees what she wants to see, prepares to do that. Behold, right, right. Yes, she could be president if she wants to. There will be only plenitude, magnificence, skills beyond comprehension. And at the end of each day, a soft giggle. Right. Look at our Sania. May she always and forever be well. May she be, if she wants to, judge, president, supreme, benign ruler of the universe. But for now, for now, be a blessed baby and a well-loved and cherished little girl. Thank you. Thank you. L, do you have any closing gesture or word? I'm full of gratitude and I want I want you to close us out with, with the abundance of what you've offered. I I ain't got no I, I ain't got nothing but breath and attention. And hopefully water. I hope you got some water. And water. I done depleted my little mason jar. I'm gonna go get this some more gratitude. Done. Yeah, and thank you, Doc. Thank, thank you, Mama D, for for all that you offered this evening as well. It's you so can do a Dr. Mama D. I don't care. Work it. Dr. Mama. Dr. Mama. I Dr. Mama. I know that's right. <laughs> I'm going to love you now. I don't care. I'm going to love you. Okay. Thank you, right. Sister Sandra. My sister Sandra says she her heart overflows with love and happiness. My eyes feel. That's my sister Sandra. She's three years younger than I. Thank you. God, I don't even know where to go. I want to say so much. Um, we got to go home. Bro. I know. I'm going to let the people go home. It's it's about to finish. It's about to finish. Oh, I'll Lord. read from the book because I, but I really want to read this Tony K. Bombard inspired poem, but I feel like I need to read from the book because it's the book's birthday. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to disrespect the book. Um, so I will read from the book and um, this is from somebody else whose name, this is inspired by somebody else whose name was called um, Nina Simone. Okay. And it's titled, One of Four Women Walking yes. Down Peachtree Street, <laughs> Licking Herself. Yes. <laughs> Take us home. Come on. <laughs> Nina dredged up peaches from the back of her throat, let it out with a sonic break I lose myself in over and over again. Auntie Linda say, when you heard her sing it, you could feel it and knew exactly who she was talking about. That's right. You could see her, bitter black daughter of slaves, hiding sweetness under tar-colored callus, manner tough like a fist, Balled tight as a heart held before her chest like a prayer she scared to have answered. Mm -hmm. And as Southern as I am, I still like my peaches unripe, mm -hmm. like when the flesh resists my teeth a little bit, or at least that's what I thought I liked till one day 
I bit hard and felt the sweet of it slip through my fingers right down my arm. And before I could think, my tongue went chasing after it. And right then the brown wasn't bitter no more, just mm. soft, like how I imagine molasses feel to spoon mm. or less metal, like honey to comb. And my hand still held the too soft flesh and the sun coming down made it shine something like special. And my mouth start to get sticky hot with all that sugar turning molasses. Mm. I let out a thick smile and seen Nina smirking in the back of my mind, fingering the piano with enough force to shake the sugar out the trees. I mean, the peaches all fall when she starts singing. Mm. They hit the ground and roll all over themselves, spent. Some get stepped on, others picked up and ate on or forgotten on the counter till they start to eat away at themselves. Mm. And that's what I'm doing, eating away at myself. Mm. A mouthful of home dripping down my arm, walking down this new street toward the new place I call home. And the magic of it is right here in the back of my throat. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for Constantine. Thank you, Oreo. Thank you for Gumbo Yaya. Thank you. Thank y'all. I'm so um I'm so in love and full and hungry and thirsty and, and sweating and everything. Thank y'all so much. Thank you to Sammy Nobla and the Auburn Avenue Research Library. Thank you to Karis. Like literally, I can remember being anxious about entering Karis because it felt like sacred ground. And so to like have an event hosted by Tom Moreland right at that corner in Little Five Points. Yeah. Like, hey, a kid. Being 10 years old, old walking in like, what's going on? So, so just thank y'all so much. Thank you, Dartricia, for literally responding to my wildest dream, my, my attempt to sow a seed, to plant this vision. Um, and thank you, ER, for hopping in with the support and the solid assist. <laughs> and thank you, Mama D. Thank you, Ariel. I hope I know you for the rest of our lifetimes and beyond. A couple more, a couple more lifetimes. And y'all, please clap it up for Ra in the chat. And Ra, you, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you for having us. Thank you for writing. Thank you for writing. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, ER. Thank you, everybody. Thank y'all so much for being with us, for celebrating this important work. Thank you for all the fellowship in the chat. Um, just so much love in the chat. I want to let folks know because I saw folks asking, this chat will stay up so you can revisit it as many times as you want um, and, and just enjoy it because there's so much beauty in the chat and so much love. Um, I want to encourage folks, if you don't yet have your copy of Gossiping, you can buy it from Karis via this teal right. link below. You can also buy all of the books that we mentioned tonight. Dartricia dropped a ton of links in the chat. Um, Ariel's book, all of Doris's books, um, they're all there. That's so um, we want you to support um, all of our poets on this stage That's tonight. Great. Thank you again to Zami Nobla. Thank you to Auburn Avenue Research Library. It is always an honor to partner with both of you. I do just want to let folks know if somehow it has missed you, that Alice Walker and Pearl Clegg are going to be here virtually tomorrow night on this very same virtual stage. Um, and I do hope that all of you will be back here tomorrow night. It is a free event. You just need to go to karisbooksandmore.com, click through, register so that you can be with us. But it's going to be another beautiful night back to back. So we hope that folks can join us. Um, but Ramalek, thank you so much. Congratulations on bringing this book baby into the world. Sending, sending you so much um, good, good wishes and congratulations on all your work. Um, and I hope that y'all stay safe and well until next time. Good night, oh, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye to everybody. Good night. Drink water. <laughs>